One of the last times that we saw you, uh, and we were trying to remember how many years ago, I'm going to say about two years ago, uh, you were traveling with your family, and maybe not in an Airstream, but it was like, you know, in a trailer, one of those kind of things with the family. It was an Airstream. It was yeah. an Airstream. Great. <laughs> Even I didn't want to credit. I wanted to give credit where credit's due. Uh, but you have a way of involving your family in your process. And I saw somewhere it was written that family's inspiration and then the music is the expression. That's an amazing way to to live your life. When do you actually write your music? And when does that actually have to happen? It that's happens uh, pretty continuously. There's a lot of things that inspire me that I, I jot down or record little bits of music or lyric or just an idea. And I, I usually finish the songs when I'm at home when I have a long chunk of time to work at it. And uh, I, I love how the songs have always been a way for me to clarify a hint of who I'm becoming. Do you know what I mean? The songs are like Merlin. They show me who I might become and give me a, a view of the world from a perspective that I haven't even reached yet. But it's a, it's a way that proves to me that uh, the, the, the songs are sort of gradually tuning not just you know, it's not just a matter of getting the words and the notes. It's a matter of letting the whole process tune my life so everything feels as good as a good song does. That's what I love most about music, that for some reason my heart is just cracked open to music. So if I want to navigate, I want to navigate by the thing that's most susceptible to guidance. Wow. <laughs> I have nothing after that. <laughs> I can't imagine what life must be like in the Wilcox household. <laughs> I guess they're used to it, huh? It is fun. And I, I do love um, that I have this balance now. Because, you know, when I first came to music, really nothing felt as good as a good song. And I knew that it wasn't just coming from the little hollow box with strings on it. I knew it must be coming from somewhere and just traveling through this instrument so that I could somehow sort of navigate like you do with a compass, you know, a tiny little thing that lines itself up with something bigger than the whole world. And I love uh, that it's, uh, it's been faithful, you know, I think where you search, you are searched for. And if we, if I sort of make my pact that I'm going to come to the guitar expecting miracles, then, you know, well, if that's where I'm showing up for my, you know, meeting place, I guess... The miracles are like, well, I guess we'll have to meet him there. <laughs> Even though it's just a guitar. I wanted, to, I wanted to talk a little bit about your guitar because this is not just any guitar. I noticed that Rain Song has uh, been selling a guitar with your name on it and, and made to your specs. What are those guitar specs anyway? I mean, I, you know, in, in 30 seconds or less. The I essential specs. The essential difference, I think, is that because of the strength of the materials and the design of it, it allows me to play in tunings where the bass string is super low and the neck doesn't bend back, so it keeps that, um, it sounds better even when it's tuned like a piano rather than a guitar. And, and if you look on your website, there are endless conversations from fans going, hey, I was just at a David Wilcox concert. Did you catch what his tuning was? And there are people like taking notes, you know, because they want to go home and figure out the tuning. I'm glad there are people like that, because when I'm between songs and I forget, I can always, <laughs> I what tuning is this? And someone will know. <laughs> And I also uh, wanted to give a shout out, you know, you're talking about songwriting and I imagine that we could talk about nothing but songwriting, uh, you and I, and happily you will be doing just that in a special thing in March. Uh, you're doing a workshop with a very demanding title, I had to write it down, Building a Sustainable Career, Making Music in the 21st Century. Wow. I like the sustainable part because, you yeah. know, when a career grows slow, it's like a tree, you know, it grows slow but it grows strong. And it grows up, it tries to attain more sort of lofty musical goals. And it grows out, it tries to reach more people, but mostly it grows in and down. It grows roots to sustain you through the storm. And that's been the real joy of this for a lifetime, is having it as a practice. 
And and yet you still have to be sort of modern and everything and have people with you in this in this workshop who are going to be talking about that whole social media thing. Yeah. 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 So very That's modern. That's been really fun. Today I did a different thing with the, all the social media stuff. I, the, My friend Jamie, who's helping me with all the social media stuff, I, I, I had a thing that I wanted to say, but I didn't have my computer. So I said, can I just leave you a message and you can transcribe it? And she listened to the message and she said, I'm just going to put it up as a wave file because you're, you sound so excited. I just, I can't type that excitement. So um, that, that may be a new way we'll do things. Yeah, we'll going see. forward, it's great to see you growing like that always, always. The latest album, Reverie, was recorded very interestingly uh, for David in, the, in front of a live audience. I, I wonder, it's probably a little bit bigger than this, maybe the space at the monastery where you recorded was different, but I love how you note that there was a subtle instrument in the recording and that was the room. Talk a little bit about that. That I always play one. better when I'm playing for people, and it always sounds better in the studio. And we thought, why not combine those? And so we had the great studio mics going directly into the sort of control room. But then we also had these mics, my normal sort of travel road mics, that were going to speakers in the back, not in the front of the room. So the people in the front just heard it acoustically. The people in the back had a little extra sound reinforcement so they could kind of have that same presence. And what, um, what that did was it, it kept the sound reinforcement from interfering with the mics that gives a live sound that muddy feel. So it was still a great studio recording, but it did have that extra sort of natural reverb because of the speakers in the back that just gave us the sound of the room. And uh, the audience was very polite because we talked beforehand about it. I said, I want this to feel person to person when you're listening at home or when you're listening in your car. So I don't want it to feel like this was an event that you weren't there, like there was an audience and you weren't there. I want it to feel like I'm just singing straight to you. And so the audience was willing to be really quiet and, and kind of hold that attention, but still make it feel like a studio recording. So when we're listening to that album, Reverie, then there's going to be that very special vibe to it. And we're really glad to have you person to person here today in the Big Lounge, David Wilcox. What a segue. Great.